here in Ederni, on the frontiers of Bulgaria and Greece, in a park which they call Kirkpanar, the Forty Springs, Turkey's finest wrestlers, the Petlawanla, the great sports heroes, are battling for the national championships. This is the 603rd successive year that they've held the championships here. For three days every June, Ederni goes wrestling mad. And for three days, the pace of the unceasing music grows daily more furious. The Turks don't have much of a temperament for association football, and rugby would be death on this sunbaked ground. But wrestling has been the national sport for a thousand years, and generations of Turks have proved themselves to be the finest wrestlers in the world. And for these three days, they make a feast. It's a family affair for the 180,000 people who come to see the fun, and there's lots of fun. If you get bored with the wrestling, then there are roundabouts and swings and whole roast sheep to chew on. There's not a moment of dullness. But for the Turkish aficionado, what goes on in the arena is the important thing. The fighting, the slithering and the slipping and the sliding of 200 hefty men, lightweights of 13 and 14 stone, and the heavy boys of 21 stone and more. And it's all run on oil, olive oil. Without olive oil, Turkish wrestling wouldn't mean a thing. They use oil by the gallon here, oil to grease their heads and faces and chests, oil to make it impossible for their opponents to get a grip on them. God knows how many olives it takes to grease the mighty men of Kirkpanar, but so far this year they've used more than 500 gallons of it. And 400 meters, that's 430 yards of cloth to wipe it all off again. And in style, it differs from wrestling in other countries, too. It's not catch-as-catch-can. It's not truly a free style. Perhaps it's best described as free and greasy. final day of the three-day event and the arena is packed tight with a knowledgeable crowd. The day began with the usual oiling ceremonies, though right through the morning and the afternoon the sweating, struggling men will be generously re-oiled as they fight. Lots are drawn to see who will fight who in each of seven categories. And weight alone doesn't decide what category they'll fight in. Age and experience in local events is what really counts. The judges watch the wrestlers being formally introduced to the crowds and listen to them being praised in mock heroic couplet. Ali's the man from Muscadar, he'll throw the dark one very far. It's all rather silly, but it's fun and the crowds like it. The drums beat out their steady tattoo, and after they've preened themselves, the wrestlers move out in line in a curious display of clapping and knee slapping, a posturing designed to show the crowds how strong they are and to terrify their opponents. It means, be careful, be warned, I'm very dangerous. But then before they start the fight, there's another little bit of traditional formalism. They hug each other affectionately, exchange kisses, and ask forgiveness of one another in case the fight results in death. It's all very gentlemanly, and to tell the truth, not always so exciting as ring wrestling in England. But it has the virtue, at least, of not being fixed. It's a display of strength and skill, but mostly of brute strength. And the rules are quite simple. All they must do is to flop the other fella down on his shoulders, belly up to the sky. And one fall brings victory. Thank you. 
Now and again, a grudge fight flares up, and this could very well be one of them. Shaban Filez and Mehmed Ali Yaji fought out the final here last year. The fight had to be stopped because Shaban's leather pants got ripped, and they couldn't find another pair big enough to go round his gigantic waist. He wrestled on in his torn kiss pads, but the effort to keep them on and to fight at the same time was too much for him, and Mehmed Ali beat him and became the 1964 champion. Now, this is a malice match which shows perhaps the promise of some life. And the drums are fairly beating it out now. And the fans getting very excited, some of them perched up in the trees. And yes, there seems to be some little nastiness down there. Blows are being struck, blows are being struck, and they're being separated by the referees. And there's another row. There's another row. Mehmed Ali is throttling him. Listen to that crowd boo and whistle. They're afraid that he'll kill them, and I don't blame them. Well, this is, this is some excitement, all right, at last. Even the police are blowing their whistles. And if they can't get this big man, this 20-stone fighter, off Shaban, he may well do him some serious damage. The referees appealing to the judges, arguing among themselves, appealing away like mad. They've got him off. They've got him off, and he'll certainly be disqualified. He's he's lost his fight because he's lost the yes, he's lost his fight because he's lost his temper. Shaban, the injured man, the man who lost his pants last year, is being carried off by the Red Crescent ambulance man. Well, believe it or not, those two men have kissed and made up of rubbed backs in the best traditional Turkish style. But I'd like to see their grudge fight here again next year. They'll carry on wrestling in there well into the hours of darkness because Kirk Panar only comes once a year. And that's the fight game Turkish style. I think that wrestling on telly on Saturday afternoons will seem a bit dull after this. <laughs>